Right. I think we we are uh, we had a wonderful day. We had a wonderful discussion. And you're gonna have to be there. And uh, I'm very glad that the president. conversation on the stage and uh, uh, so I'm a little bit nervous you know I, I cannot keep my mouth shut and I'm not sure I'll be allowed to leave the country or not but he's a friend of mine so I I, I, know, I, I, I think I'm fine uh, can you please welcome His Excellency Paul Kagami? <laughs> right, I mean, we, uh, we're going to have, as usual, a very frank and open discussion, and uh, there's no taboos. And uh, we will have also room for, to take questions at the end. And I'm very grateful, actually, because President Kagami made the point. He said we must let people also ask questions. So we're going to take questions uh, from people. But we're going to take questions from non-Rwandans, because <laughs> Rwandan people have the chance to question the president every now and then. But our guests don't have this chance. Is that fair? Yeah, fair. It's, it's okay. So please, non-Rwandans only will be allowed to ask questions. And uh, let me start by really expressing our gratitude and thanks. People enjoyed very much coming to this country. And we always have a problem when we have uh, one of those meetings because we have a strange mix of people we have some very senior people, and we have some ordinary people. And trying to get visa for everybody to come to our event is always a nightmare. We did not have a single problem with any person trying to come to this country. Really. And the process of getting the visas to people was so efficient. I don't know if Sega is here in the room or not. Is Sega here? Sega Gebres is not here. She lost her chance to be famous. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because she told me of amazing experience she had and how, how efficient is the government in dealing with the issues of visas. Uh, so really thank you for that. Thank you you managed to develop something in this country which some people will say it's not African, but I, 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 I don't agree with that. I don't think Africans are not that bad, but we, we don't have good leaders. That's the problem. Is that reasonable assessment? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Africa is not bad at all. Uh, Africa is as good as any other continent. Absolutely. But, the, but when I was coming this morning here, I noticed there's no cars in the street. And I asked what's happening today, and people said, oh, today is the day we clear the streets. Yeah. And citizens come out and clear the streets. Yeah. This is amazing in uh, really uh, uh, interaction between citizens and the state when people feel ownership of their own uh, streets. How many people are aware of this fact? Can you raise your hand? You are aware of this fact? Yeah. I was the only ignorant guy then. <laughs> I didn't know why there's no cars. <laughs> anyway, but that, that was uh, right. Mr. President, I think uh, this is going to be a difficult conversation because we have limited time. And you straddle a number of areas. Not only you are the president of this country, but you are chair of the African Union. You are an international figure. You are involved in so many things uh, 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 around us. So we'll try to uh, visit. Uh, 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 these different areas. We start with the African Union. Now, we also chaired the reform in the African Union. 
what exactly are going to reform, Mr. President? What, what do you hope to change? Well, to begin with, uh, we have to change the mentality uh, as to how we do things on our continent. Whether it's about efficiency, it's about uh, uh, pride in ourselves that will drive us to do things. Uh, but also institutional reforms, which institutions have been put in place or need to be put in place, and for what purpose and how they operate. We had to examine this to determine which reforms would uh, be appropriate for the institutions. The other part has been uh, to look at the financing of activities of the yes. African Union. Financing is very critical in many ways, two I will talk about. One, you need resources, you need finance to do things. There's no question about it, that's one. The second is, what is the source of uh, these funds that are going to help us do things we want? The source matters because if, it is, if you're not the source to generate these funds that support you to do what you want to do, and it is somebody's financing, well, there are, there are a couple of problems associated with that. You, you'll be trying to do what is good for you, uh, for yourself, but you also have to pay back. You have to do something else for the other that may not be healthy. If you could, this, uh, Mr. President, I know you are a diplomat as well. European Union at the moment fund the bulk of the operational budget of the African Union. Yeah. That's correct? And what we're saying here is, what sovereignty you sure. have if somebody else is funding your operational budget? And why can't you fund your own budget? Is that correct statement? First of all, it is not proper that you, we don't fund our own budget because we can. That's number one. So yeah. if you can, why don't you do it? Why don't you? That's the first question. And if you want somebody to fund your budget, then you will be doing somebody else's bidding, not really doing what you wanted to do yeah. for yourself. It's clear. Yeah, of course. Yes. Like if Chinese build the African Union building yeah. and then tap the data, you yes. say that's fair. I mean, yes. it's your building. That's a big deal. It's a very fair assertion. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> It is with the Chinese, it is with the Europeans, Europeans it is with everybody. Americans, yeah. it is with everybody. It's open house. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> That's okay. I mean, we, we have a frank discussion and... Yes. and uh, <laughs> That's why we are friends. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right. And uh, so, you, you, as I understand that uh, the proposals are coming out that uh, uncertain imports, not all imports, certain imports, uh, each country will levy 0.02%. That is not 1%, not 0.1%, 0.021% tax, and this money will be allocated to fund the African Union. And you got 40 countries ac accepting this? So far we have um, close 25 or about 25, 25 countries applying it already. Applying it already? Yes. And uh, there are others yet to find their way to doing that. But what is important with that, if I may say quickly, is 0.2% of eligible imports was actually calculated. It was arrived at through a process where some of the people, the Africans, some Donald Kabruka did Donald that. Kabruka is here, he, he, he led that okay. team and has been working on it. So it was calculated to find, and, and fa they found that it was possible for countries 
to actually uh, you know, do Can that and uh, be able to the fund the activities. Yeah. Secondly, it's, it has automaticity in, in, in the process. Yeah. It comes, uh, you don't have to wait for people to Decide choose whether they do it or so. The so it, it, it yeah. is predictable and that is very important. Uh, even where people had doubts, because either they did not understand it uh, properly or they had uh, other considerations, we have had the team again go to countries to explain how this works. If they are worried that they are going to pay more than they were supposed to pay according to them, or what they were paying before, then a conversation uh, happens where people are made comfortable that this is something affordable for them and also that actually works very well for all of us. Is there any country against this? Well, many times not openly. Okay. Yes, but if you're not doing it. Are you free to share with us which countries are causing problems? Well, or you get it, uh, 54 uh, minus Zotan 25. Fund? <laughs> then, uh, <laughs> right. No, because I think it's possible also to us to have conversations with the guys who don't want to participate. You say, why aren't you participating? I mean, I think it's time also for citizens to know what the leaders do, but we leave that to your uh, discretion. Uh, okay, so that one thing. You also held a big, you have been very busy as the African Union chair. You had a, a meeting here also about free trade. Yes. You, that's completely free trade between Africa or selected items or how far are you going to go on free trade? Uh, it was intended to have a completely free trade area. Everything. Yes, across the continent. And in fact, it is uh, part of the reform process. Uh, as I said, reforming yeah. Uh, our mentality and yeah. activities and, and so on. For countries of the continent to increase intra-African trade and to be able to create a free trade area comes out of realization of the need, but also shifting from a position where that has not been happening and in fact at our own huge loss, because we could have gained more by yeah, going that trade. way. So the fact that countries responded positively and uh, saw it as, as, as very important is, is a key movement forward. I, I think it is a big achievement. And uh, countries, this time 44 countries, uh, in the summit we had here a month ago, actually uh, signed up some have already ratified and are in the process of ratifying. And by July, when we go to Mauritania for the African Union Summit, we hope the number will have even gone higher or all the 44 or near the 44 countries will have ratified. So which shows the speed at which 44 have already signed, signed. signed when, on that day. Uh, to be frank, I mean, we have the habit Sometimes we sign to things, but we never do it. You know, Mobutu Declaration on Agriculture, when some 15 years ago, our African leaders signed to allocate 7% of their uh, budget to agriculture, and I think only less than 10 countries done it. So are you optimistic that those guys who signed are going to respect their signature and execute? I'm very optimistic. Uh Signing is the first step that is necessary. So we have that. Okay. The next is implementation. Right. And we already have a good number that are showing the way and we are right. eager to do that. In fact, the countries already, uh, 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 as I said, are ratifying. Right. And, and that shows the yeah, key Would it be useful for the African Union to consider to have more transparency in just letting us as citizens know Who's doing what to whom? Who is signing, who is not signing, who is paying, who is not paying? It's just to understand what our governments are doing. Uh, traditionally, African Union is an executive club and presidents are protective of each other. And uh, uh, is that 
in principle, that is uh, acceptable. Uh, and, and we should, and very reasonable, and in fact, uh, to an extent, it is happening. All we need to do is uh, be more efficient about it, more open about it, uh, so we can work together to because make sure that... The citizens have the right to get also yeah. participation in this, uh, yeah. The signing happened on the camera. We had the TVs and the televisions <laughs> and, and radios and yeah. so... Well, just we, we, you know, the, they say the proof of the body isn't eating it, or yes. you know, so. so we really need to see it. I mean, but we I have been, we, we have been great supporters of the, I mean, this foundation. We had complete sessions on economic integration of Africa, regional integration of Africa. We think it's a must, it's essential. We need it. Yeah. Many of our countries are subscales. Many of our countries are landlocked. Many of our countries. How can you breathe? How can you? You know, you, we need to have that. Uh, I mean, look at this. The best thing European did was the, the market. It's very necessary, and I think Africans are realizing that. To do that. This is uh, the way to go. Uh, we need to go faster. There is no question about it. We need to not wait for another year and another year. We need to do as much as we can and as soon as possible. And I think the African Union Commission is represented here. I think they hear you. Uh, we work with them to make sure that uh, uh, there is coordination and collaboration between different uh, uh, institutions of our society to, to make sure that each plays their part. To, their part is doing. Yeah. Uh, one uh, last, last year in uh, our annual meeting, I had a conversation with uh, Kofi Annan. And during the discussion, the subject of the International Criminal Court came up. I don't remember who brought it up. And uh, fortunately also, Fatou Ben Soda, she was in the audience. She's a prosecutor of the ICC. And there was a very interesting debate about uh, ICC, is it useful for Africa? Is it bad for Africa? Why are we rejecting it? Why are we... And uh, uh, two things t we took out of the discussion. The first thing, the ICC itself has a majority of judges who are Africans, actually. There's a lot of African judges there. I think they have seven or eight out of 19. The prosecutor, prosecutor is, is African. So it's really almost an African Place. I mean, it's not like an imperialist uh, or, or very white place, you know. There are a lot of black people there. <laughs> and, Precisely, and, that is the point. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I think being African is not a question of the color of the skin. It's, okay. uh, it's, it's what is in your head. <laughs> right. And well, Fatou Sola said most of the cases concerning Africa was referred to us by African governments, actually. Sure. So why people are complaining? And then the other argument was saying, oh, no, 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 we don't need you because the African Union now has an African court. And African court now can deal with these issues. We don't need the ICC. Mm -hmm. What is happening? I mean, is that true? You have an African court now which is, can replace the ICC? Well. We have an African court, which is ICC. Uh. Yes, that, that is, ICC was supposed to cover the whole world. Yes. It ended up covering Africa. Yeah. So that's, that's why I'm saying that. And there are many people across the world that should be tried by the court. Yeah. Yeah, this right, but, this right but, recently yeah. to go to a number of other countries, actually. Oh, in fact, some of those countries uh, or leaders from Africa who are being tried Indeed. by the ICC or whom the ICC intends to try, whatever they are trying them for has been committed in a partnership with those countries they don't try. That's the, that's the yeah. biggest thing. So, from the beginning, I thought there was a flaw 
not so much in the setup of ICC, but the basis on which it was being set up and how it was going to be used. Right. And by the way, at, right at the time of inception, I had a conversation with the people who were in it. We had a meeting in uh, Sweden mm. where a conversation was taking place. Mm. And I told the people, even before it was set up, that I have concerns that when they are setting up this court, it's going to end up being a court to try Africans and not to try people from across the world, yeah. right from inception. And I don't think I have uh, been uh, proven wrong. So, but this has nothing to do with saying people who commit crimes should not be tried, no. Okay. When I'm arguing like that, people must be accountable for crimes anywhere. No impunity. Absolutely. Yeah. But how is the process? Right. How is justice going to be dispensed? Yeah. This is the main question. Uh, even uh, with some discussions we have had, we tried even to improve what was already taking place by saying, why don't we actually create an African court? Yeah. And the cases may not end there, but the African court can help us identify which cases actually have merits for being tried. And maybe that could be the first stage before you pass it to the ICC. I see. Even that one is, without, uh, is not without problems, because as we said earlier, you may still have an African court that is not really very African, mm. as we have seen in many things. We, we, you know, we, we, we are, when we were joking about having a, a, an African Union building financed by this and that, yeah and how different forces be operate behind it. Yeah. It's the same thing. If you have an African court, it doesn't mean it's not going to operate on behalf of others, and especially when it comes to funding or other things I, I, I don't have to say here. But Mr. President, I mean, one thing I was concerned about, because uh, I was trying to read about what the African court uh, the African court, uh, I understand, is meant really for political against humanity, genocide, or serious crimes. And, uh, but I found it, it, it doesn't have the remit to try presidents or vice presidents or minister or something like that. So what is the function of that? I mean, who commit genocide other than presidents? <laughs> I, I agree with you, <laughs> but uh, the, the functioning of the courts can be improved, yeah. even starting from it what has, you are saying. Has, it has, because yes, but what is the point again of having a court which you so much highlight, I mean not you, I mean people talk about, that may end up actually only being selective about which cases they are going to try. Right, yes. Or a case, a, a court that is going to exonerate certain cases because those powers behind it yeah. are part of those crimes that are committed yeah. where people are said yeah. they so deserve credi to be tried. Credibility is a major issue. It is with a huge ICC, issue. With an African court, and we need to find a way, yeah. but what we need is justice for victims. We need that. And we need to find to navigate how we're gonna uh, deliver Complete that. Completely agree. So thank you very much, Mr. Now, another uh, big African issue, which uh, uh, would like your input on, is that issue of the Congo. This is a huge country. Uh, in terms of population, resources, uh, 
and yet it is a very miserable country. I mean, they, 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 they cannot believe how poor the people, the atrocities committed, the, 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 and then the failure of leadership in, in, in Congo. We have a president now whose term ended some time ago and refused to have an election. Uh, where are we going to go from here? I mean, is, 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 uh, do we need uh, uh, intervention? What kind of intervention? Is it uh, armed intervention? Is it diplomatic intervention? Is it sanction? Is it what, what, what tools to, to, handle with, to handle this? Now, you have probably one of the best views from here and the one about what's happening in, in Congo. Personally, you know all the players. And uh, actually, some people will blame you. They think you, you got this guy in power, in, frankly, probably. Yeah? Uh, so. <laughs> We'll talk about that. Yeah. <laughs> so you, you have some moral responsibility here, Mr. President. And uh, what is the way forward? One, I was going to take issue with uh, being asked the question about Congo, because I'm asked many times about Congo. But this time I won't take issue because I answered it as the chairman of the African Union. Yes. Otherwise, there has to be one as African. No, yes. That's a great. So, yeah, that's, yeah. That's, uh, <laughs> so everybody knows here. This is African Union position. Yeah. So otherwise, I, 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 I think it has been unfair many times for people to ask us about Congo as Rwanda right. or as the president of Rwanda. But so this helps me. One. Uh, for those who may blame Rwanda for what has happened in Congo over the years. Well, I, I, I don't have any objection to people having their opinion, but uh, Rwanda got involved with the Congo for sure uh, because of the reason. Uh, in fact, Congo came to Rwanda first before Rwanda went to Congo. Uh, when uh, Mobutu then, the president of Zaire, intervened in our country in 1990 in support of Habyarimana, as the president of the country. So it is Congo which came here first before we went there and, and because of our people had gone there and uh, who were still crossing the border, coming back. They had committed a genocide here, they crossed to Congo, they got support of Congo, then they were coming back, intending to. So that's what really created the dynamic in which we got involved. And uh, so I, I think the rest about Zaire and Mobutu is history, but we can now come to this particular problem. Even if you would say President Rola Kabira, who was there before the President one who is his son and son, that we got involved, we got involved with him in support of a situation that would help us uh, deal with the problem that was originating from Congo at that time, as I have just explained. So that's how we got involved. But having said that, and many months or years that followed in which we got involved, it was over the same problem. But I think that ended uh, long ago. So which means Congo was left there right on its own, its people, its leaders to sort out whatever problems they had. So you talked about Congo being poor, infrastructure lacking, this and that. Of course, one thing you did not mention is uh, the worth of the country itself, the worth, you know, for, for such a huge, wealthy country to have to be so poor uh, is, is characteristic of a problem uh, relating to Africa and how we need to really 
go about uh, resolving many issues Africa uh, or problems Africa faces. And then it comes to that problem which you talked about in terms of leadership. Leaders of Africa, whether they are, wherever they are, leaders shouldn't just be presidents or prime ministers, but these are very important leaders, even others at different levels. The fact that we cannot manage our wealth to deal with our poverty is a, it's a defining issue as far as I'm concerned, or Africa, as I know it, is concerned, we, we should be a better place than where we are today, given, indeed, the leaders we have, whether they are young or old, or men or women, and, and, and so on and so forth. And the history which some people referred yeah. to earlier, you know, we can now look, we have to look back in history to know how good Africa was or should have been. <laughs> but with this time, we have to change and then look into the future and say, no, but Africa needs to be like this in the future, learning our lessons we have learned and looking at the rest of the world the way it is. And we ask the question, why? Why should Africa not be uh, like the, the many places developed as there? So, Currently, we have the Congo situation where there is supposed to be a, a transition, so to speak. But it's not me who created it. I'm just yeah. talking about what and, is and there. The African Union. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I, I think the, there is uh, elections coming up, uh, or supposed to be coming up. The contestation is about whether that is going to happen, and when it is happening, there are disputes about uh, is the current leadership staying, is it uh, stepping aside, and there is a lot of uh, friction going on within and then within and from outside. It, it, it's a big uh, problem that uh, people are trying to look at and address. So from the African perspective, or African Union perspective, what is intended is to say, one, uh, I think there have been efforts to bring the Congolese different groups together to agree how to move forward. I think they have secured some kind of uh, agreement as to how they move forward. Now the problem has shifted to being, is this agreement going to be implemented uh, because there are signs that, yes, people uh, have reasons to be doubtful. So what the African Union wants is to pursue that route where the internal situation, their leaders continue to talk and if they need support of neighbors or the international community has already been engaged through the UN, and which has presence there, by the way, it has been having a, a peacekeeping force there for close to a decade and a half. Yes, yes, close to 20,000. Uh, well, if you ask me what they have done in the 15 years, I'm not very sure. Actually, but, we have uh, the head of peacekeeping actually who's here, the guy who's managing those guys. I think where is... Uh... Okay. Yeah. Maybe they are doing... Okay. A, maybe can explain we, we what have another, doing here. Yes, maybe <laughs> they will help us. But it's not their problem, it's our problem still. Yes, that uh, people can come and uh, live with us trying to address a problem, and we end up with more problems than we had before they came. <laughs> That's, uh, it's not their problem, it's ours. <laughs> right. Yeah, uh, so it's, it's a big problem. We, are wait, we don't know how it is going to be addressed, but uh, I, I guess, as we discussed, maybe the leaders of Congo are listening. They should be figuring out what they need to do, and uh, 
Also, maybe let people know where they can help to, to, to resolve that problem. Because Congo's problems are not just Congo's problems. They affect us as well, yeah. as neighbors. Congo has nine neighbors. Each one of us is affected by what happens in the Congo. There's no question about it. Yeah. Some more than others, but all, everybody right. is affected. Right. So that's why, naturally, neighbors have legitimacy to do something or say something about right. it. And, and if we can figure out as neighbors how to help the transition in the Congo to happen without affecting us or affecting them so badly, then that's what we should be looking right. at. I think we have uh, one of the uh, major uh, uh, opponents of Kabila here uh, was supposed to be the main supporter, uh, uh, main candidate for, uh, where is Katumbi? Oh. oh. Okay. <laughs> you are not allowed to go back to the country, correct? Okay. And do you have anything to add what the president said? I mean, is there any hope for a reasonable election in your country? I think I don't have anything to add at the moment. I think the president has said everything. Okay. Thank you. He's, he's going to be a good politician, this guy. Isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, I can go on all night, really. There are so many issues to discuss. But I, I, can, I think we need to open it to people also who want to ask uh, uh, some questions. And I said, really, no statements, right? Question. And any and, question. Huh? And any question. Yeah. And any question. He is willing to answer any question. Please, Mike's. Okay, okay, we'll come to you. Um, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Nomashu Bingume from South Africa. I work as a consultant for the Department of Trade and Industry. And my question to His Excellency is, what is your succession plan for Rwanda? And if that succession plan includes changing the constitution and running for a 10th term, how are you going to ensure that you don't fall into the pitfalls of the predecessors that have stayed in power very long, who started off delivering um, for the people and then somehow forgot or that got less lost in the... Okay, question is clear. Okay, okay. thank you. <laughs> Let me answer that first. Are you sure you are from South Africa? <laughs> <laughs> well, f first of all, um, there is a, a, the question. The U.S., when they borrow money, they're getting it in 1.5, 1.9 interest rate. Africans, when they get the same amount of money, they're paying 9, 10%. The people who don't need a break, they get a break. The ones who need a break, they don't get a break. The sheer survival of the World Bank IMF is based on the fact that African countries and, and many other developing countries do not succeed. Their success is based on our failure. That has to change. And guess who can make that change? We, the children of Africa, we, the Africans, are the ones who have to say, we know your game now. Enough is enough. We're not playing it anymore. And this is where the diaspora come in. There are more Ghanaian doctors in New York City than in, in the entire country of Ghana. There are more doc Nigerian doctors in LA than in the entire country of Nigeria. So let's be serious here. What Africa needs is capacity, capacity, capacity. And that capacity is in the diaspora. So it behooves us to bring the diaspora together. Let them understand what is really going on in our Africa. Diaspora are not going home. Diaspora are angry about Africa because they are not understanding the root cause of why Africa is where it is today. They think getting rid of a president will take care of the problem. Far from it. That president is just going to be replaced by another one who is going to equally suffer from the same difficult environment to work in. So let's look at an Africa that must be free to take care of herself, an Africa that's free from exploitation from outsiders. The multinationals who are stealing from Africa every day in broad daylight. I use an example of the DRC. If you ever fly very low over the DRC, you'll see tarmacs in the jungle. You'll see 747s flying into DRC, picking up minerals and flying right out. 
the same multinationals are responsible for arming young people and giving them MK16s. Because why? Their satellites in the skies are telling them where that village is. There's, there are lots of diamonds. So what do they do? Arm young people, drag them up, and send them to go chop off a few heads. The rest of the village runs away, so they come behind and do their illegal mining. We black people must understand what is really going on. Because what we are shown instead is, oh, look at those Africans killing each other. There are some serious games that have been played in Africa for far too long. And once we understand that, we can strategize as to how we can begin to bring the difference and bring the change that Africa needs. And that change can only come if the African diaspora are united and the Wakanda villages, as I call them. It is our organized way of saying, starting with one African diaspora center of excellence, it will be a new city, a developmental hub that we can then take from there Every sector is developed. Take healthcare. How many doctors do we need in this region to take care of this many people? We pick up education, same thing. We pick up engineering. We pick up electricity. How many megawatts of power do we have in the region? How many do we need? Be it solar, be it wind, be it hydro, be it geothermal, be it nuclear. We were singing, what you were singing? The masters of the field were coming. We who are boys are coming. The masters of the field are coming. We who are boys are coming. To win the race, to win the race, we trust in God, we trust in God. To win the race, we trust in God. And that's for, and that's for Opoku, right? Masters mm -hmm. are coming. Masters are coming. Mm -hmm. Masters are coming to win the race. Oh, 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 oh. Masters are coming. And then they will sing. Prepare the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Prepare the world. Yeah. Then we go more. Then we'll keep quiet. Mm -hmm. Then we will sing. Ah, when they tire, then we'll come in. Mm -hmm. Diplo, Owens. Diplo, Owens. Are we the We have to win the race and take a cup. We are the masters of the field and best athletes, famous to all and decent boys. How would you prove? Then they will start. I've been quiet. I have a I have a quiet. I have a quiet. I have a quiet. I have a quiet. I have a Hello, welcome to your coffee quarantine. Nane. Uh, e levi, e levi, e levi, Kasana, Yakasagana, Ubiarika, e levi, and she says, me too, being me. Ni e levi. Because e levi problem no a e simple. Now, Ghana government is on Peser or Tiasse, in Tine, a bet, so much then. No, what Tiasse ye? I was here for 2020. IMF, ma Ghana, one billion dollars. Billion with a B. Same year, no, World Bank, ma Ghana, 430 million dollars. Nina for COVID. Every year, you know, in 2021, no, IMF for some Magana, one billion dollars bill. One billion with a B. Now, World Bank, some Magana, 130 million dollars. In 20, uh, 2021, no, so I one billion, 130 million, yeah, if he World Bank buy any IMF buy, no. Now, we say post COVID. Rejuvenation program say what be ma young economy no so into no World Bank and IMF this is Ghana ma Ghana Ghana government core Bank of Ghana koyi 20 billion cities say COVID in T Nebuchadnezzar for what World Bank ama mu 2 billion uh IMF ama mu 2 billion World Bank ama mu 560 million dollars for COVID I know on some Musan call Bank of Ghana could eat 20 billion cities. Say COVID in tea. Say I see can we move home content training here. And I won't move. We'll move here. Baby, I will be for Ghana. E levy tax. We'll call ports. E levy. We'll call airport. We'll call hotels. But what they are to to be beer as for Ghana. E levy. E levy. E levy. Say I see can I have petrol. E levy. We'll call you near my port. E levy. Says he can hear now, far now. In this, a ne government person or tray and say Ghana for a be a yard during a year, Jumentina or de sa eleven reba. Yes, you perceive a tray government to say, and you say, I do in year, you move you who never cosono near Jai Amano. If you say, who per se, wunya eleven young, yeah, yeah, responsible citizens, young per se, yeah, yeah, 
yeah yeah stand by yet you know okay car yeah train for your home or no one can say yes yeah responsible citizens right into yeah yeah responsible citizens now the thing is so what per se would free sika not would the yebribia because young credit rating record former and yeah young abra bought now the e-levy barber to so i didn't because there is over three almost three billion Ghana cities are record to the presidency. Three billion Ghana. In it also by 75%. What also by 75%? I will say by $375 million. $375 million. Save you and not at the presidency. You don't need three billion Ghana cities going to the presidency. Then now what are you? Mr. Kufuado. And the Koso war presidency. Then now what is the presidency? Mudi ye deng, mudi shi usuruku, ana deng na mudi ye. Legislature, leg, Ghana legislators, ye were 275 legislators. Deng na saa legislators no, waye ma Ghana. Se se meno moka se, he, Ghana fui. Ye be to me afa, I install le Watson. IBM computer, wa friendi si Watson no, a ah, e ye artificial intelligence ha. E be ye nine, over 90% of yeng, Parliamentarians, you know, you bet me replace one with Watson. Watson computer, Ben Wedjuma. Now, you're downscale. I then you hear 275 parliamentarians out. Then we are Magana. One liability to Ghanaians, you know, over 100,000 cities every month per parliamentarian. 100,000 cities. Kona kubun kunta alana he. And we are what was judiciary? Judiciary, he. America, yeah, 330 million people, 11 times the size of Ghana. Ghana, yeah, 30.8 million. America, were nine Supreme Court judges. A kufuado ba na Ghana near were 10 Supreme Court judges. A kufuado, our point eight akaho. In to say say Ghana, 30 a country of less than 31 million people, no, yeah, were. 18 Supreme Court judges. Ding ne how yang. 18. Ding na are yang na just a kronga will be asking na Ghana ne won't ye hear Supreme Court judges. Ding tin ye wo Supreme Court judges. A country of less than 31 million. 18 Supreme Court judges. Ka ka one Supreme Court judge be a no liability. April hundred and fifty thousand dollars, hundred and fifty thousand cities a month. Kona kubun kunta he ne V8 ordered them ne bodyguards ne ne driver ne ne te, ne krone ba then in tea ne yafa an extra eight Supreme Court judges and nun kwan cheng say si a minimum ka say ye wo 34 uh, uh, wo friend den, uh, 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 ambassadorial post around the world 34 Vatican City Ah, a will room cry your war ambassador waho. Deng na ambassador of Vatican City ye magana. Mun can chile yenge. A deng ni war ambassadors wo baby to say Malta nom ne wa friend deng Sri Lanka si Sudan nomini a de deng or common a yen ye de by in tin ye war ambassadors wo Sudan. It doesn't make any kind of sense. So we re e levy. What is this? Yes, some wo uh fifty-eight. Uh, uh, diplomatic missions around the world. Diplomatic mission, no, and Kahun Fasuni said, We will trade desk at the income, commerce, a bread Ghana. So, diplomatic missions around the world, they are 50, 80. Sika Beng, what the bread Ghana. Mon country near here. A year crong waste of money and resource. Musi Muhu, he levy. Ye betcha must say, he levy no monkona monko ye infimuamu for two. Positions now more create a wound in Fasono, and one monko ye infi. I think na mo how Ghana for sa MPP for then na Ghana for ye munti na de biya ye nchi ya se ye nchi ya se no sa position si na it was hey we over two thousand executive positions are we executive benefits ne perks we to kwang we business class we nya four by four no many adi sa ni many ne si we yi fi ho and I what also and no no be ma eleven no income from eleven ye be nya fi ho mroso mroso mroso. Deng necessary ye catch there a kufu adu no government. Say sad deno munko yi yin fi honum na mu boka gana foka unnecessarily. Na mu be we yi ne we na excavate sa u nyanku pandum yen se yen sanko ka 
ni yen nang ne nyem fa nye sika ne yem fa ntew ye yi levi kason mo be ka che nse mo akwa shew excavators 85 excavators abako ye over 150,000 to 200,000 mo san akwa shew na ka ho na pan no we he ye di cup no we he eh ti no we he ya no cup no so awa bona aka ho eh ekufu ado and his government why gana fo ye mpene nde mpene china he left you know one hour yes but she one hour no why coffee scan was up ah yeah pen in a lay what when a yeah 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 no more barbecue you be jina mo dine ning say yeah in print a kufu ado and his government a ding a ding what's it when uh cluelessness meets unpreparedness no mpp infoni now be home ho yeah bro we're not gonna take this we're not having this moon fuck yeah i'm pinning that in pinning Eleven years here, Munko Inko Kat Legislature, Munko Kat Executive, Munko Kat Judiciary, Nasi Kan Ambassadors, any were friending ambassadorial post, any ye diplomatic missions. So many many now Mun cancel, now Mun reduce, now Mun for computers in your head. Legislators are here worth two hundred seventy-five. No, you bet me the drone, drone I replace one. You're here 275 at the maximum four per region. You're here 64 parliamentarians. You're here 211 parliamentarians. No, we a liability to Ghana at about 100,000 cities every month. You're in trouble if you come on. Enough of this nonsense. You're real. You're real. I want your word in class symbol. Okay, okay. So when we are the class symbol of knowledge. Strength, adaptability, uh -huh. energy, freedom, unity, hope, peacemaking, harmony, intelligence, Continue. power of love, strength. Said in class symbols, when you know, you be a bra, bo be a be a boy, yeah, now the sign and no pepper, no, not yet, the car and in class symbols, you know, okay. Now, Ghana for Tennessee, I who said, said the another uncle who for the able to mind, you need your home, and see, this is the edding class symbol for failure. What? It's a free nerd court. So I didn't cross him. We won't spare him. You know, yeah. I can't cross him. Also, the president is now a free nerd court. We won't spare him. You know, yeah. I can't cross him. Also, photo and I didn't cross him. Both for failure. You are a failure. You are a failure. And I beg and plead for all your sake. Yen and Nanuma Motina see here at the class symbols. He said, Mummy and Fawi in Kamu. This for the class symbol for free. Happen to me here of this. Now back to the studio. I'll tell you about this. This is where you want to use your life now. Oh my God. You know what? I am a boy. What can I do? Why? It is a castle. Oh man, you are here, man. Hey! Then I'm a memoir and create, you know. Maza. I come to you. 